Hello, welcome to Mrs. Maiden's uh, quarantine teaching of Shakespeare's The Tempest. I don't know how this is going to go, and I'm putting this on YouTube, so if you're watching because you're from my class, awesome, and if you're watching just because you felt like watching this video, good luck. So anyway, I, we're going to be reading Shakespeare's The Tempest. The Tempest is not one of Shakespeare's best known plays. In fact, when we say his name, most people's mind goes to something like Romeo and Juliet. Hamlet, even A Midsummer Night's Dream is more popular, but The Tempest is worthwhile reading because it's maybe part of the Shakespearean era we don't always think about. So we're going to go through a couple of quick important facts about Mr. Shakespeare himself um, before you guys read it. Those of you who are in my class and watching this for class, let me just let you know, if you watch this video and take a couple notes off of it, this would cover your assignment versus trying to read through all the boring book material, but I didn't say that. All right, so first of all, Shakespeare was never meant to actually be read. When he wrote his stuff, it was meant to be performed on stage. In fact, back then, all of Shakespearean actors were men because acting was considered too risque for women to partake in. Um, because of that, uh, your favorite characters from Shakespeare, or maybe not your favorite, but your best known, like Juliet, uh, would have been played by another guy. Keep in mind, nobody bathed back then, so regardless of how you feel about that, it would have smelled pretty bad. All right, secondly, um, this theme has to do with exploration. So Shakespeare himself wrote during Elizabethan times, and that was when exploration and finding the new world was a big, big deal to England. Basically, in Pocahontas, when they say these white men are dangerous, that pretty much sums up the time that Shakespeare wrote during. Now, The Tempest is loosely based on something that happened during this time period. There was a major storm, a ship got knocked over, and the crew and the travelers disappeared. They actually popped back up in the Virginia colonies out of little boats they made for themselves. But in Shakespeare's version, they get swept away to an island by a sea hag witch that was cursed by... Um, one of the people on the boat to begin with, and then hilarity ensues, as it always does. Maybe. Anyway, before you take Shakespeare too seriously, remember that it was never meant to be taken that seriously. This was the low-brow um, comedy of the time, the low-brow um, drama. This is sort of their version of reality TV. This was not the high class that we would see in like opera houses. So people would take food to the theater. They would throw food at the actors if they didn't like them or they didn't like their character. So you can imagine playing the villain was a lot of fun. If people didn't like you, be prepared to get hit in the face with a literal rotten tomato, not just a little ding on your Facebook screen or on your TV screen when you click that button. Uh, that being said, um, they made up stuff all the time while they were acting. Shakespeare's works were a loose guideline for them to follow. They were never meant to read the script word for word. And sort of like Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, he made up a ton of stuff as he went along, and so did most of Shakespeare's cast. That's why any of the documents we have today are not really precise, and you'll see a lot of different adaptations of it in various movies, because he cut stuff out, he put stuff in. Actors would cut stuff out and put stuff in, just like we do to Harry Potter and those sorts of things now was happening still back then. All right, as I said, these were meant to be attended by low class people. And if you really think about it, most of the themes aren't that sophisticated. So for instance, in Romeo and Juliet, you have a young guy who's 16 who got dumped by his girlfriend. And this 14 year old girl shows up at a party. They fall in love. They give money to a priest who for unknown reasons is willing to marry him and everyone ends up dead. It's really not that complex, but we like to pretend it is because the language is challenging. That being said, no one gets it the first time you read it. Understanding Shakespeare the first time you read it is unlikely at best. Um, and if you do get it the first time you read it, then maybe English is a degree for you because you're probably better at it than I even am. But something to keep in mind is that it's not old English. Shakespeare was written in modern English, but he made up a lot of phrases. So there are a lot of Shakespearean insults that are things that we might not get off the top of our head because he was sort of making up language as he goes along, which is something a lot of people don't expect. The real trick to understanding Shakespeare is simply not to get frustrated with it and not to look too deeply. It's not actually a bad thing to watch a movie adaptation of a play while you're reading it because that will help you understand and grasp the theme, which is a lot more important than whether or not you ever can understand all the thous and thys and all those sorts of things that pop up in his text. Okay, as Hamlet said um, when he was asked, what do you read, my lord? He just said words, and that's all it is on the page. 
we just mix up the same 26 characters over and over again and hope that we all get it. This is not meant to be a traumatic experience for you, and I'm going to make it as best as I can. Last parting bit of knowledge, the tempest is a storm. So when we say um, a tempest, think hurricane. But the tempest is not a character, um, which some people confuse in this. There'll be a little quick quiz on here to identify which character you're most like in the story, but know that we have lost sailors, a sea witch, a cursed relationship, and two people falling in love that shouldn't. So it makes for some pretty good, um, some pretty good quarantine reading as long as you follow along. That's it for now, guys. And if you took any of these notes down, that's going to be your notes and assignments for this week. So you can just check on the document, fill it in, and you should be good. But keep in mind, it's not that hard. Just stick with me. You guys got this. Bye.